it's Cupcake Kami Sama back here and welcome to another video, the final installment of the Advanced Coordinating series. Yes, I am bringing this series to a close now because I feel like I've said everything that I had to say and like I've been repeating myself for the past few episodes anyway. Of course, if there ever comes a suggestion from someone that will be too good to ignore, then I will share my thoughts on that topic in a video and or a blog post. To wrap the series up, I chose a topic that has more than just a whiff of your average women's magazine sort of content. How to look expensive in Lolita. I know the sort of money required to drop on a coordinate, so the last thing anyone wants after doing that is to be told that they look cheap, unpolished or eater. Whilst this video won't magically make anyone go from the metaphorical rags to riches, hopefully by the end of it you will be armed in tricks to ensure that your outfits come across as more expensive than their price tag might suggest. Some people seem to have a knack for making a bunch of inexpensive and even completely off-brand items come together into stunning coordinates that seem on another level. So demystifying even a bit of that process would be the perfect wrap-up to the series that, brick by brick, built upon your coordinating foundations. Before that, even though the advanced coordinating series is coming to an end, this does not mean the end of videos that are yet to come. So do subscribe to my channel to make sure you catch those. My one video a month schedule can still be somewhat irregular, so clicking the bell icon next to the subscribe one will let you know when that happens. At this point, I would also like to give a special shout out to my supporters on Patreon who do not cease to amaze and inspire me to push myself. If you would like to join their ranks, the link is in the description and tiers start on as little as $1 a month. It will be lovely to see you amongst them. All of those preambles out of the way, there is one more thing to clarify before I get to the meat of the topic at hand. Throughout this video you will hear me use adjectives such as expensive and cheap when describing outfits. This does not refer to the actual cost of the cord's individual components, nor are these words used like the mainstream fashion articles of similar titles that break down the looks of the upper social classes into something that people on any budget can reproduce or fake. Whenever you'll hear me say expensive here, it's used to describe an outfit that is polished and intricate, one that appears put together by a Lolita with many years of experience and wardrobe building behind them. Not everything that looks expensive actually is, and vice versa, and how much money you spend on a luxury niche fashion is no one's business but your own. Achieving the look is not necessarily prohibited by the price tags. In the same breath, this isn't meant to be a shop the look kind of a video. That is too specific to each individual's taste, whereas the advanced coordinating series aims to offer broad advice that could apply to anyone, whilst I'm encouraging everyone to figure out for themselves what they actually want, this particular dress, or one with similar features regardless of where it came from. This is for you to work out and you only. Being able to recognise when you want this particular thing and when you want the idea that it represents is an invaluable skill that will help save you money in the long run. It's just not one that can be taught in a video like this and I'd rather spend the time to share what I know and think about elevating your looks with what you already own. You can start doing that by something that I suspect you already do, which is mixing cheaper and more expensive pieces within a coordinate. It sounds silly when put like this. Don't we all throw in the proverbial H&M hair clip or equivalent into our cords already? Everyone I know certainly does. But what lesson has that taught us in the long run? What have we extrapolated from the fact that a cheap small accessory won't make an otherwise expensive looking coordinate look bad? And what from that can we apply in the wider context? And how does that relate, if at all, to the possibility of dressing up a cheaper main piece in order to make it look more expensive? 
Whilst I wished I had better examples at my disposal to properly test and demonstrate this, I believe that it is possible to make a cheap main piece look expensive if coordinated with the right everything else. Like everything else within the realm of advanced coordinating, this isn't a straightforward formula, but rather part of a bigger picture that's made up of colours, themes, balance, other accessories, overall styling and more. However, if you've learned to pay attention to those already, then you're only limited by what's in your possession right now. With some appropriately detailed and high quality builder pieces at your disposal, lifting a main piece that may be a bit lacking in polish seems perfectly doable. Provided that the main piece was made for Lolita fashion and that you're not trying to make the proverbial hell bunny dress work as one. That is, a whole other kettle of fish that I talked a little about already and that I may talk some more about in the future if the stars align. One of the cheaper main pieces at my disposal is the jewellery box GSK from a Chinese brand called Rezalen. It's not as lacking in detail. I believe that our video has been blessed. It's not as lacking in detail as some of the extremely cheap Lolita main pieces that I have seen out there. Nonetheless, in comparison to many of my other pieces, the quality of materials and construction is visibly lower. It's funny how both the coordinates that I picked as examples are quite similar in spirit, though that makes the comparison all the clearer. In the left cord from July 2017, the bodyline blouse, whilst not objectively bad and working well enough for the pirate theme, is in a similar position as the dress on the cheap to expensive scale. The details that are there are pretty small and neither elevate the dress nor cover up the parts where it doesn't look too expensive. And neither is anything else in this cord, which means that whilst the look is nice, it doesn't do anything beyond that. Compared to its spirit sister from August 2021, it becomes obvious how much more expensive this idea could look if executed with more expensive pieces. The L'Esprit de la Noblesse Blout has all the dramatic volume that the bodyline one lacked, and the corset is more prominent than a pearl belt. Despite the tights being the same as in the earlier outfit and the other accessories being on a similar level, those two swaps alone hide enough of the cheaper parts of the JSK itself to achieve a much more expensive look overall. In most coordinates, the blouse is the second most visible item after the dress, which is why investing in detailed blouses that match your style of choice matters so much. They really do make a difference, not just to protect your modesty, but in terms of changing up the look of the dress and compensating for what the dress might be missing. The same applies to other builder pieces, hence my relentless banging on about them. The more of your builder pieces fall into the appropriately detailed category, the less you'll have to worry about your coordinate overall whether it's for an expensive and intricate main piece that needs a blouse to keep up with it, or with a cheaper main piece where a blouse can shine and take charge of the look. This brings me to one of my favorite points that I can't seem to have an advanced coordinate video without, depth. Because paying attention to the level of intricacy of your builder pieces inevitably leads to outfits having more depth. And the more depth an outfit has, the more one has to look before they feel like they've seen everything there is to a cord, and the more expensive it appears. When you think about why clothing was historically expensive, you'll know that prices rose proportionally to the level of detail that a garment had. Whilst this doesn't mean that you should start adding things willy-nilly in the hopes of magically making your coordinate more polished, Come on, we're an advanced coordinating 10, we're way past that kind of a lack of nuance. The more practice you get at incorporating plenty of detail, the better your overall results will be. Keep in mind that Lolita Fashion was built upon the principle of dresses being elaborate and full of detail. So when the rest of the coordinate isn't keeping up with that, or compensating for it in case of cheaper main pieces that lack the same level of intricacy and finish, 
it will drag the whole outfit down instead of elevating it. By all means, look at the original video about depth in a coordinate and check out the examples there to see how much of a difference this can make. Don't worry though, I won't leave you without an example that's specific to the topic of depth in the context of making a coordinate look expensive. And for that, I am using one of the most inexpensive pieces in my wardrobe. This OP from a Chinese brand called Grove Deer. In a twist of events, the left cord is the more recent one from February 2022 and it was purposefully kept simple. This cord had to be easy to pack and to me Ero Lolita is one of the looks that's a bit more forgiving of some minimalism. Nonetheless, whilst there are some detail in the cord, it doesn't pack a whole punch when it comes to depth. The whole aura of this outfit looking expensive rests on our associations with big sparkly jewellery being expensive. With so few elements besides the dress, it doesn't take long to take in everything there is to this look. Unlike the right one from October 2021. By virtue of being far more intricate, it ends up being more expensive looking by Lolita standards. And there is more to draw the eye to. Layers and textures are present in every part of the outfit, so just when you think that you've seen it all, you notice another detail. These days, most of the mainstream fashion's guys to look inexpensive stress the importance of subtlety. Yet whilst there, subtlety means minimalism, in the context of Lolita fashion, subtlety can very well mean including depth within an outfit versus relying on a loud print to do all the heavy lifting or avoiding an unnecessary overload of accessories where it isn't warranted. And where the main piece doesn't intrinsically have a lot of it, that's when you fake it with layers and extras. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, then please take a moment to click the thumbs up icon on it. It really does help creators like myself as it's your way of letting both me and YouTube know that this is the sort of content that you enjoy. Thank you for all the support so far and let's get back to the video. The final suggestion that I have is about seamless blending of multiple items. Think of it the same way as you do about makeup. That also looks more polished with the rough edges and individual layers blending into one cohesive creation. Except that to achieve that with clothes you will need a bit of luck, a bit of will to try things and a bit of an eye for detail instead of brushes. When two separate pieces come together as if they were one, it is as if a bit of magic happens that helps you both have a complete coordinate and achieve that extra level of cohesion. Once again, if done well, as in seamlessly, it is perfect at masking any lacks that the pieces may have individually, as well as by potentially offering you the perfect solution for when you don't have a ready-made whole piece at your disposal. Sometimes, a hair clip can match a shoe so well that they do look like they were made this way to begin with. Or a pair of wrist cuffs matches a blouse so perfectly that you simply have a blouse with a fancier cuff detail and not a blouse with wrist cuffs. You can extend this sort of thinking beyond pairs of items into whole builder piece sets. Though the more individual pieces you try to blend, the more luck you may need in finding those perfect matches. Eventually your collection may grow to a size where you have several of those sets to dip into thanks to acquiring multiple individual items and those with detachable pieces. Until then, don't be disheartened if your wardrobe right now is much smaller and look for those made for each other pairs that may already be waiting to be discovered. They're not always obvious. Sometimes you may find that a pair is a perfect match only within this particular coordinate so allow yourself the room to be surprised and take every error in your trial and error journey as a lesson to take forward. A great way to demonstrate seamless blending is with underskirts. For how useful they can be when you need that little bit of extra length, I've found them to be tricky to not look so obvious. Some of that is because of the difference in fabric weights, as many underskirts are made in light chiffons, while some is due to the difference in where your dress ends, where your petticoat ends, and where your underskirt ends, 
and trying to fill them all evenly. Because of this, my first attempt at using an underskirt with Bodyline Sweet Macaron GSK back from January 2017 wasn't too great. Sure, I had some extra length, but there was no hiding that I had two separate garments on as the chiffon underskirt moved, draped and generally behaved differently to the heavier, stiffer poly cotton of the dress itself. It also didn't help that the underskirt matched neither the lace of the dress nor the blouse in colour, so I didn't have anything to blend into to trick the eye into being part of something else. This isn't to say that the cord was a complete write-off, but it's not one that I look back on as one of my better examples. I had much more success adding some length to this GSK in October 2020 when I tried to use a Bodyline L380 skirt as an underskirt and generally had more luck using skirts and dresses as underskirts but that's a by the by. Both the GSK and the skirt are made of very similar fabrics with similar shape, weight and drape so that they aren't fighting each other for petticoat poof. If anything, the weightier skirt helps fill the skirt of the JSK a little bit better thanks to those stiffer layers. Moreover, although in real life the skirt is still in ivory versus the white lace on the hem of the dress, the two photograph similarly. Plus, I had an ivory blouse collar under the cardigan which tied the ivory into the whole cord a bit better. Altogether, the blending of the multiple items is far more seamless in the right example then in the left, and with the extra layer and detail provided by the extra bit of length, the whole outfit is more polished and more expensive looking. Over the course of the 10 advanced coordinating videos, totaling something like four and a half hours, including this one, I've repeatedly mentioned multiple concepts that elevate one's coordinates. Balance, cohesion, depth, experimenting, and many more. Because that is what advanced coordinating is ultimately about. It's about approaching outfits as a whole, with everything that goes into it to achieve the final look and not taking it like a checklist to be completed. I've no doubt that when you're new to coordinating any kind of fashion, including Lolita, it's difficult at first until you find your feet. And it is okay to find things challenging at first and to take your time learning those tick box basics. But unlike many other fashions, Lolita does come with a lot of guides and pre-made lists as well as options to buy a complete set, which make getting it right easier. Those don't necessarily teach you how to style yourself, which is why it's hard to make the leap from a beginner who grasps those basics to an advanced Lolita who knows what they're doing and is coordinating on instinct rather than with a help sheet. Hopefully throughout the series, my breaking down of certain points has provided clear enough guidance to those nuanced concepts and helped you realize that once you know those basics, things aren't so straightforward or black and white and that that's okay. And the more you practice coordinating, the more that nuanced approach to putting outfits together becomes second nature, the more detailed, interesting and, yes, expensive, your coordinates will come out looking. Like with anything, some people will get there before others, but this isn't a race. Do it at your own pace, don't think about the destination, and instead focus on taking that next step after the one you've already taken, and you'll get there. Even if not always perfectly smoothly since we all stumble, which is okay too. You don't owe 100% perfection 100% of the time to anyone. The person that I would like to highlight as an inspiration in this final installment of the Advanced Coordinating series is someone I have personally looked up to for literal years. At Senna Cannon, who you can also find on her WordPress blog under the same name, is a Lolita whose style I have been gushing over for as long as I can remember and never stopped marvelling at how intricate and expensive her outfits look before having to pick my jaw up from the floor once I read the cord breakdowns. All of this fabulousness 
not just with the more inexpensive Lolita pieces, but with actual 100% completely off-brand items? No, that surely had to be impossible. And yet it's not. Even now with the style shift from the detailed and layered classic looks towards colourful sweet ones, I still see the same magic touch that changes an otherwise pretty inexpensive main piece into a cord that's super fun to peel back the layers off and see the individual elements at play. To get to Santa Cannon's level of coordinating mastery will take anyone, even those with a good eye for quality and detail, years to develop since it relies so much on having a thorough understanding of what makes something Lolita, as well as on owning the right pieces to use. But with patience to acquire the right items, a bit of sensibility for those finer things within the cord, and a touch of willingness to try things outside the box, whether as small as pinning something that's normally left alone, or as large as incorporating a whole garment, I have no doubts that the practice would eventually pay off. And whilst I typically preface these inspiration recommendations with something to the extent of find someone whose style you admire and zoom in on their outfits, I wholeheartedly believe that anyone could learn something from Santa Cannon. Lolita fashion, especially in recent years, seems to place so much value on labels. But what can someone who's new to coordinating Lolita fashion learn from looking at an all-brand coordinate? Unless they're willing to deconstruct the looks they see, they'll most likely learn that they should be buying brand because brand equals good Lolita. Taken in cords by someone like Sana Cannon, who successfully incorporates genuinely off-brand items, takes a lot more will and energy at the end of which you emerge not just with an appreciation that a brand tag doesn't equal a good Lolita coordinate, but also with an understanding that with enough knowledge, skills and creativity, anyone can achieve that expensive look. They only need to try and then keep trying. And on that note, Thank you everyone from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. If this is the first advanced coordinating video that you have ever seen, then there are nine previous ones that you can look back on to pick up even more of my takes on the various aspects of coordinating Lolita fashion. For everyone who's finishing this particular journey along with me, I couldn't think of a more fitting end for it. When I did the first advanced coordinating post and video, my intention was to share the tips that have helped me up my own game and helped me grow my own coordinating skills with things that I didn't see anyone explicitly talking about. There is an unacknowledged gap between being a good beginner and a firmly experienced Lolita that just like teenage growing pains, seems to only be met with the advice of waiting it out and keep on trying. Now that I've reached the end of the advanced coordinating series, I hope that you don't feel like this is the only option anymore and feel armed with the tools to help you discover what is it that you want to wear within this colourful frilly realm. Because to borrow an analogy from the world of creating writing, I firmly believe that coordinating isn't an intrinsic talent that one either has or not. It's a skill that can be learned, practiced and perfected until you're wielding it with confidence. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment underneath. Share the most important tip that you have learned in your Lolita journey so far, regardless of where it's from. Or if you feel like there is something I haven't addressed in the 10 videos so far, let me know and I'll see what I can do. You can also show me your support either through a one-off tip via coffee or by joining my Patreon. Patreon members get early access to every single blog post that I do, which did include every advanced coordinating content. Whilst those on the $2 a month tier and higher get one week early access to every single video that I upload. And speaking of my blog, there is a lot more Lolita fashion related content there. So head over to Cupcakes and Unicorns to check all of that out. Thank you so much for staying with me for this journey and all the best of luck on yours. 
I will hopefully see you in my next video. Take care. Bye!